Hey everyone, Timber Master here. And in this video, you're gonna be learning about insulin resistance and its huge, huge role with weight gain. So we're gonna be going over what insulin resistance is, what hyperinsulinemia is, how we develop insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. Then we're gonna be going over a great way to determine if you might actually be insulin resistant. Then we're gonna be going over 10 different factors that can actually lead to insulin resistance and how to combat these factors all so you can lose weight and keep that weight off for good. Now, what is insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia? Well, insulin resistance occurs when our insulin receptors on our cells become resistant to insulin. And because our bodies become less receptive to normal quantities of insulin, then we actually have to start producing more of it so it can properly do its job. And it's actually this increase in insulin production that is hyperinsulinemia. So why is it important to care about this though? Well, according to Ivor Cummings and Dr. Jeffrey Berger, co-authors of Eat Rich, Live Long, anyone who needs to lose weight is highly likely to have some degree of insulin resistance. And it's also estimated that about 65% of the United States population may have hyperinsulinemia. So that's about two thirds of the entire population. But how do we actually develop insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia? Well, we currently live in a world where carbohydrates are healthy. And our current recommendation for carbohydrate consumption is supposed to be about 45 to 65% of our total dietary intake. But we know this about carbohydrates though, is that when they are fully digested and broken down, they turn into a sugar molecule called glucose. Now, when we're consuming carbohydrates though, we're gonna be seeing a corresponding increase in blood sugar or blood glucose. And as a result, we're gonna be then seeing an increase in insulin. Now, insulin is the master manager of glucose and it has a variety of different functions, but when it comes to gaining weight though, it does two things primarily. Now, insulin will move glucose throughout our entire body into our cells where it's gonna be stored as glycogen. But the thing with glycogen though, is that it does have a capacity, there's a limit. And that limit is about 270 grams where we're gonna be storing about 200 grams of glycogen in our muscle tissue and then 70 grams of glycogen in our liver. And once we've hit that glycogen capacity, then we're gonna be storing that glucose as fat. So basically what's happening here is we're eating carbohydrates, which is gonna cause our insulin to spike and that insulin is gonna cause us to store fat. The other really important thing that insulin does is it prevents us from burning fat. So if there is glucose in our body, then it's going to prioritize using glucose as energy instead of using fat. So basically, if we're eating our carbohydrates, we're putting ourselves in a preventative state so we cannot burn fat at all. So to quickly recap, insulin is gonna do two really important things when it comes to weight gain. It's gonna put us in a fat storage state while simultaneously preventing us from burning fat. And this is really, really important when it comes to us seeing such sudden weight gain over the last 50 to 60 years. Now, if we've been adhering to a low fat, high carb diet, which a lot of us have been, then we're gonna be seeing chronically elevated levels of blood sugar. And as a result, our body's natural response is going to bump up our insulin levels to effectively lower our blood sugar. And you're gonna need more and more insulin to see a noticeable effect. And this is when we're becoming insulin resistant. Now, unfortunately, because we become insulin resistant, our body's natural response is to start producing more of it. So hyperinsulinemia, which is again, when we're seeing excess circulating insulin throughout our entire body. So long story short, hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance are kind of one in the same, but they're both gonna be preventing you from burning fat and they're both gonna be putting you in a fat storage state. Okay, so if this is kind of starting to make sense, you go ahead and hit that like button. And if it's not, then go ahead and ask a question in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now, the interesting thing with hyperinsulinemia is that it can actually be tied to both normal and high levels of blood 
glucose. So how does this actually work though? Well, if we have elevated levels of blood glucose, more insulin is gonna be needed to shuttle that glucose to our cells. Makes sense. But if we have normal levels of blood glucose, we may still have hyperinsulinemia because those high elevations in insulin could be keeping our blood glucose normal. So this kind of makes things a little bit tricky, but there is one really good way to help you determine if you might be insulin resistant or not. So how to determine if you're insulin resistant. So if you're interested in learning if you're on your way to becoming insulin resistant or if you might already be insulin resistant, there is a very simple test you can do at home that is a very good predictor and that test is a waist to height ratio. Now the general healthy cutoff is 0.5. So currently in the United States with women, the average waist is 38.7, average height 63.6. That is a 0.61 waist to height ratio. And with men, the average waist is 40.2. The average height is 69 inches. So that comes out to a waist to height ratio of 0.58. So I guess the average person in the United States is very likely insulin resistant and probably weighs more than they should. Now, what are the 10 factors that are gonna be making us insulin resistant? Well, first and foremost, we're eating too many carbs in general. Remember that carbs cause our blood sugar to increase, which is causing us to see spikes in insulin. And then those spikes in insulin over time are making us insulin resistant. We're also consuming too much sugar and we're also having too much alcohol as well. So sugar and alcohol are primarily metabolized in the liver and this is gonna lead to fatty liver and an increase in visceral fat. And visceral fat and fatty liver are heavily associated with insulin resistance. Smoking is also gonna be another causal factor. So nicotine is actually gonna change some of the chemical processes in our cells and in our body so we become less responsive to insulin. Poor quality sleep and lack of sleep can actually increase insulin resistance as well. One study found that when reducing and restricting sleep just for seven days, people saw decreases in insulin sensitivity by 24%. Lack of exercise, resistance training, and living a sedentary lifestyle can cause you to become more insulin resistant. This one totally makes sense. I mean, there's just been tons of data that suggests that exercise and resistance training are really, really great at improving your insulin sensitivity. Stress can actually decrease insulin sensitivity too. So cortisol is a stress hormone that's produced when we're stressed and cortisol can actually increase your blood glucose, which as we know now, causes spikes in insulin and the spike in insulin can actually lead to more insulin resistance. Lack of sunlight and vitamin D can actually negatively impact insulin sensitivity too. So data suggests that people who are lower in vitamin D levels are typically more obese and overweight. Diets high in omega-6 fatty acids and low in omega-3 fatty acids can also make you more insulin resistant. So data suggests that consuming omega-6 fatty acids decreases insulin sensitivity, while consuming omega-3 fatty acids increases insulin sensitivity, which is exactly what we want. And then lastly, if we're eating too frequently all throughout the day, then that's just gonna lead to higher elevations in insulin, which can lead to further insulin resistance. Now, how to improve insulin sensitivity so you can lose weight for good. First and foremost, reduce carbohydrate consumption and stop consuming sugar and alcohol. If you're a smoker, you gotta quit. Sorry, that's just plain and simple. With sleep, try and get a minimum of seven hours. If you can get eight or more, that would be ideal. So when it comes to movement and exercise, try and get at least 10,000 steps in each and every day. And if you can do some type of resistance training several days a week, you're gonna be in great shape. Now with stress, what you can actually do is try and eat healthier foods. So eat more nutrient dense foods. So get your vitamins, get your minerals and try to limit and reduce your toxic 
load. Something else you can try and do again is to get better sleep and get more sleep. And then lastly, what you can also do is try to make improvements with your digital well-being. Now, when it comes to sunlight, we gotta get more of it. If you can get outside for at least 20 minutes every single day, that's great. If you can't though, then go ahead and take a vitamin D supplement and that will help with your insulin sensitivity. Now with omega-6s and omega-3s, ideally you would like to have a four to one or one to one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. So first and foremost, get rid of processed food. There are a lot of omega-6 fatty acids in the processed food, and those are gonna be very pro-inflammatory and cause insulin resistance, remember that. And then second, what you can do is increase the amount of fish that you're consuming, increase the amount of grass-fed pasture-raised meats, have some eggs as well. And then lastly, if you're not gonna be able to eat all of that food, you can always try having an omega-3 supplement. And finally, what you can do is you can start intermittent fasting and then you can even do regular 24 hour fasts as well. And when it comes to your eating frequency, just two to three meals per day, no snacking at all. And then if you decide you wanna do a 24 hour fast, then just have one meal that day. And all of these tips are gonna be incredible for helping you reduce your insulin, helping you become more insulin sensitive, all so you can lose weight really effectively and do it in a very healthy manner. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, if you like this video and you wanna learn more about some really effective weight loss strategies and becoming healthier, then subscribe to the channel. And watch this video if you're interested in learning more about intermittent fasting and fasting and how it can effectively lower your insulin levels. All right, thanks so much for checking out this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one.